A recent survey by the Bank for International Settlements BIS, found that 93% of central banks are working on central bank digital currencies CBDCs. The survey also found that 15 CBDCs could be in circulation by the end of the decade. The BIS is the so-called Bank for Central Banks, and it has been helping central banks around the world develop CBDCs. CBDCs make it possible for governments and central banks to control every single transaction you make. The BIS is also anti-cryptocurrency, and it sees stable coins as a threat to fiat currencies. The BIS survey found that 20% of central banks are looking to roll out a retail CBDC in the near term. 60% of central banks have accelerated their work on retail CBDCs because of crypto adoption and development. Central banks are concerned about stable coins that could be used as a means of payment. CBDCs represent a direct claim on the central bank. Retail CBDCs are for everyone else, while wholesale CBDCs are used by select individuals and institutions. Wholesale CBDCs will make it possible for institutions to leverage new use cases such as tokenization, composability, and programmability. Central banks are working on both wholesale and retail CBDCs. There are twice as many retail CBDC pilots being conducted as wholesale CBDC pilots. Central banks are concerned about stable coins that could be used as a means of payment. Stable coins have attracted considerable attention from central banks, regulatory authorities and international standard setters. Some institutions have proposed backing stable coins with CBDCs. The BIS survey was conducted at the end of 2022, when the crypto market was crashing. The survey has been conducted for six years. The BIS asked central banks a full list of questions about CBDCs and cryptocurrency. The most interesting question was whether central banks have the legal authority to issue a CBDC. The 86 central banks that participated in the survey represent 82% of the global population and 94% of all economic output. This year's survey had a record number of respondents, which suggests that central banks are getting nervous about crypto. The BIS survey found that two central banks have already issued a CBDC, the Bahamas and Nigeria. There are almost twice as many retail CBDC pilots in developing countries than developed countries. Central banks are developing retail CBDCs mostly for reasons related to financial inclusion and payments efficiency, whereas they're developing wholesale CBDCs mostly for reasons related to financial stability and monetary policy. Two central banks have already issued a CBDC, the Bahamas and Nigeria. There are almost twice as many retail CBDC pilots in developing countries than developed countries. Central banks are also interested in using retail CBDCs for financial stability and monetary policy, which could include restricting how much you can spend or even deleting your savings if you don't spend enough of them in a certain time frame. 70% of central banks already have a fast payment system of some kind, and almost 20% plan on launching one. 80% of central banks believe that fast payment systems and CBDCs are not mutually exclusive. Almost 20% of central banks plan on rolling out their retail CBDCs in the next three years. Around 15% of central banks plan on rolling out their wholesale CBDCs in the next three years. 87% of central banks are planning to use an intermediated CBDC. Governmental authorities are also heavily involved in retail CBDC development. Crypto's track record is evidence that it's a threat to financial stability. Stablecoins aren't really used for payments, but crypto nonetheless poses financial stability risks. The BIS survey found that CBDC adoption and usage will be low. Governments may try to restrict our access to crypto, but if people need it badly enough, alternative systems will emerge that make it accessible. Stablecoins may not actually be competition for fiat and CBDCs today, but they will be once everyone understands the dystopian features that CBDCs have. The best way to prepare for the CBDC rollout is to stack SATs in a safe place and accumulate them using trustworthy exchanges. If governments and central banks are able to track every single transaction we make, it will be much more difficult to keep our finances private. If governments and central banks are able to track all of our transactions, it will be more difficult to use cash or cryptocurrencies to conduct anonymous transactions. The rise of CBDCs could also lead to a decrease in competition in the financial sector. The rise of CBDCs could give governments and central banks even more control over our finances, and it could make it more difficult to use cryptocurrencies to escape government control. It is still too early to say what the long-term impact of CBDCs and cryptocurrency will be, but this survey provides some important insights into the future of money. The BIS survey is a sign that central banks are increasingly concerned about the rise of cryptocurrency and stable coins. They are worried that these digital assets could displace their national currencies and give governments less control over the financial system. 
The survey also suggests that central banks are open to the idea of issuing their own CBDCs, but they are still in the early stages of development. The implications of this survey are significant for the future of money. It could also lead to a decrease in competition in the financial sector, as central banks would be able to offer their own digital currencies. Central banks are working on both wholesale and retail CBDCs. There are twice as many retail CBDC pilots being conducted as wholesale CBDC pilots. Central banks are concerned about stable coins that could be used as a means of payment. Stable coins have attracted considerable attention from central banks, regulatory authorities and international standard setters. Some institutions have proposed backing stable coins with CBDCs. The BIS survey was conducted at the end of 2022, when the crypto market was crashing. The 86 central banks that participated in the survey represent 82% of the global population and 94% of all economic output. This year's survey had a record number of respondents, which suggests that central banks are getting nervous about crypto. The BIS survey is a sign that central banks are increasingly concerned about the rise of cryptocurrency and stable coins. They are worried that these digital assets could displace their national currencies and give governments less control over the financial system. If central banks do start issuing CBDCs, it could lead to a decrease in financial privacy and make it more difficult to participate in the informal economy. It could also lead to a decrease in competition in the financial sector, as central banks would be able to offer their own digital currencies. The development of CBDCs in developing countries could have a negative impact on financial inclusion. If central banks restrict how much people can spend with their CBDCs, it could make it more difficult for people to access essential goods and services. It is important to remember that CBDCs are still in the early stages of development. It is too early to say what the long-term impact of CBDCs will be, but it is important to be aware of the potential risks. I hope this summary is helpful. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.